Hi friends, it's Miss Kate from Aspiring Educators. I am making a video today talking about Story Mountains. So in this video, we are going to be filling out and practicing how to make a Story Mountain. We're gonna be talking about, well one, what is a Story Mountain? Two, we are going to practice making a Story Mountain. And then three, we're gonna be talking about why Story Mountains are important. Now. The video is based on another video you can find on our channel. Our lovely friend, Miss Jenna, read a book called Don't Feed the Worry Bug. So before you do this video, I want you to go back and listen to Miss Jenna read her book, Don't Feed the Worry Bug, because we're going to be basing our story mountain on that story. And she does a fantastic job reading it, and there's great visuals for you all to um, look at. So that is going to be today's video, and I hope you all enjoy. Hi hey friends, I hope you all enjoyed listening to Miss Jenna read the story, Don't Feed the Worry Bug. Now we're gonna be doing a reading workshop based on that story. So we are going to be doing Story Mountains. So first we're gonna learn about what is a Story Mountain. And again, we're using that story example, Don't Feed the Worry Bug. And then we're gonna do our practice and then we're gonna learn why is this important. So what is a story mountain? A story mountain helps us visualize the plot of a story we're reading. We can help break down a story by creating sections of the plot. We start with the background of the story. So who's the main character? Where's the story taking place? And then we move to the rising action. We can ask ourselves, well, what's happening at the beginning of the story? And then that leads us to the climax. This is when the character or characters are facing a problem or the most important event of the story happens. Then we move to the following action. So what happens after this big event or problem is introduced? What do the characters do after the big problem? And then we move to the resolution. And this is how does the story end? We're doing our example on the story, Don't Feed the Worry Bug, which can be found on our YouTube channel where Miss Jenna reads the story. Now we're gonna be doing our practice. So after reading that story, we can think about what was the background? Well, we know that the character was Wince, the story was Wince the Monster of Worry, and it started with him at a park on a bench. And then we find that Wynn starts worrying about a bunch of stuff like his homework and his laundry, that he needs new pants. And all of a sudden, the worry bug shows up and he starts to grow. And then we find, whoa, the worry bug got way too big and Wynn starts really freaking out. And he decides, I need to do something about this. So after that happens, Wynn does some research on how to get rid of the worry bug. But while he's doing this, he starts getting so busy that he stops worrying. And finally, the resolution is, well, Wince took a stance and told the worry bug to go away. He knew to stop feeding the worry bug his worries. So that was an example of how to do a story mountain plot. We identified the background, who was the main character, we identified what was happening in the story and then what was the big problem? What did the main character do after that big problem was identified and how the story ended? So that was our example. And I encourage you all to do this with a lot of the stories that you read, either with yourself or with family or friends. Then we're gonna be talking about, well, why is this important? Well, one, it allows us to visualize the story structure. Two, it helps us identify important parts of the story and three, and the most important, is it helps us grow as readers. As readers, we are going to be learning so many new skill sets throughout our schooling, and this is just one aspect of it. I want to say you guys all did a great job, and I hope you all had a lot of fun doing this. Keep growing. Bye.